Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Numeric Workshop, Painting with Parallax. This is Parallax of the Black Pants Legion, joined tonight by the Warlax of the Black Pants Legion. Hello! How is everybody doing? Well, um, I'm alive. Well, I mean, that's better than not. Hey, Cold, I see you in the chat. If you want to come on in here, too, it's just the two of us tonight, so we'd be happy to have you. Uh, let's see. So, uh, I just want to go ahead and jump right into it tonight. I'm already in the viewer submission section here. Um, by the way, guys, when you send this stuff to us, that, Cold, that's fine. You don't, you don't have to worry about that. Yeah, if you want to come in, say, for an hour or however long, you're fine. Um... Viewer submissions. Guys, I do want you to know one thing about oh. this. Oof. Sorry, Oof. Night Owl. That, that doesn't sound fun. No. You're getting over some food poisoning, but at least you're doing better than last night. You know, there's nothing that's quite as much fun as sitting on the john and counting the tiles on the floor for the entire night. No. Okay. Okay, real quick. Viewer submissions. Guys, when you send this stuff in, Diggs forwards this to me with whatever name you guys put in the email. So occasionally um, I do get something that has like a real name on it. I try not to, you know, go into that. Or if I do, I'm only going to use the first name on it. Tonight, Drift Pirate sent us this one. After last week when we did the uh, little bit of a tutorial on dry brushing, he uh, sent us this email. It said, I used some of your dry brushing techniques on this, and I'm really happy with what I got out of it. So, like, I'm that, thrilled. That looks great. It does. And, you know, that's one of those things where a little bit of dry brushing can bring out those edges and give it a little bit of sense of weathering, and who doesn't love it? Uh, it looks like that's been a Mad Cat that's been used for a bit. <laughs> How unclan like <gasps> <laughs> okay oh oh we got a we got a question here if i want to get started painting little robots i'm going to go to my brick and mortar okay yes those are things you can do mad ducks it's asking us uh mad ducks of house quack i've finally gotten paid and have literally dozens of dollars if i want to get started painting my tiny robots I'm going to go to my uh, brick and mortar comic store. Can I start with some spray primer in a single color with some brushes? Yes. You might want to get more than one color just so you can add some uh, different accents to it. Like, you know, if you're going to get one color, like get whatever color you want. Uh, I well, What I will say, if he's going to get one color, do either a an army painter speed paint or a contrast color from Citadel so that you will get the shading one way or another. Yes, if if that's available at your comic store. And if it's not, like if what you can get is Viejo or whatever, pick a color you like. Honestly, I would I would almost say pick up like three or four colors where you get a base color, a black, a white, and a metallic. And for like Battletech, that's really going to do you Bondsman, my timber wolf oh. has been soiled. Clean it with your toothbrush. Oh, God. Uh, and grayscale because colorblind? You know what? That's fine. Do it, man. That sounds great. Okay, so like I was just saying with uh, black and white, uh, like cut out the color, go with black and white or get a gray, and then like you can very easily... Do a base coat of gray, or as you said, they only have Wraithbone spray primer. One, you don't have to use Citadel uh, spray primers. Like, honestly, a lot of times, just like a spray paint will do fine. I am going to say, yeah, it's, it's I not have. Like I have three of them above me or anything. I have. Like yeah, well, I mean, we all have our moments of weakness. I went through a can Mechanicus gray before I realized this shit's 20 bucks. That's silly. Yes. Uh, Wraithbone, the color's fine. I, like, honestly, get yourself a can of, like, Rust-Oleum paint and primer and give it light coats. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. But, uh, yeah, cheap rattle can, like Spare is saying. That's, that's what I go with. Um, I am gonna say this. I have been burned now on four cans of Krylon primer. I'm not buying Krylon anymore. <laughs> no. 
So after I showed off the texturing that it left on my models last week, it went through three cans of the same color and one can of a different color. I'm not doing it anymore. So just to give you guys an idea, my primer shelf contains uh, three GW Citadels, um, an Army Painter White, uh, a Vallejo German Gray, a Mr. Surface, and a Testers. <laughs> and uh, here's what I'm going to tell you. The models that I have tonight, I printed half an hour ago, and these are in cheap Walmart flat white matte spray paint. Works well enough, man. It does. It's like $3 a can. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, I mean, I only get this because I get employee discount on them. <laughs> yeah. So like the Walmart shit, it work. I'll, I'll show you whenever we get into it, but it's fine. Okay, now we're gonna go. Th this is the only user submission we got this week. Um, so listen up. If you guys want to see your work here, be sure to send it in. Cookie dropped the email address into chat a little bit ago. That is art at wbpl seventy six dot com. Send it there, and we. And we will do great stuff with it, and we'll show it off, and we'll talk about it. And if you want feedback, put that in the email. We'll talk about it. I am thrilled to have it. Cookie, I'm glad that Wookie is happy with the Apple Barrel Paints. It's a great place to start. I don't want to go back there. <laughs> <laughs> I do not wish to go back. I do not. No. That's where I started when I was customizing Heroclix. I'm not going back. Okay, we're going to go ahead and show off what we've been working on this week, and we're going to start with uh, Warlax. Tell us about yep. it. Well, uh, last week I uh, showed off this model uh, for um, uh, an idea of what the speed paints were available and what they were doing. Um, honestly, this week has been incredibly... Uh, busy for me so i haven't really had a lot of time to sit down but today while i was making dinner i went through i put some black highlights on it the tubes in the back are now black and i'm actually priming to get ready to put some flames on him and turn him into a salamander well hot damn ha ha see what i did there yes yes i do Thank you, dude. I, I, I saw. I saw. <laughs> you, you, I seen it first. Okay, now we're going to go into... Uh, I, I assume this is this is what you sent me. Have you been working on anything else you want to talk about before we dive into me? Um, I have been working on a couple of things uh, for the campaign that I was playing in. Um, I actually... Uh, uh, got a unit that was blooded uh, the other week, and I decided that uh, as my units uh, get blooded and level up and everything else, that I'm actually going to put campaign markings on them. Um, and so I am going to be taking uh, the larger shoulder pad, which would be the left-hand shoulder pad of my XV-8 battle suits. And I'm going to be putting a green strip down the side and then little white dots for each individual level up, level up past that. Do you want me to say it again? What's that? XV-88 Battlesuit. <laughs> XV-88 Battlesuit ready. That's no, stupid. Uh, That's been fun. Yeah, absolutely. But, um, yeah, uh, tonight I'm actually uh, working on finishing that guy up, and I was sent a <laughs> particular courier model. Uh, oh, crap. Oh, my. Well, that's fun. <laughs> there went the courier, huh? <laughs> uh, no, there went uh, almost my entire thing of scale 75 ink intensity crimson. Because, uh, reasons. Guys, Warlax might, Warlax is going to be occupied for a few minutes, so I'm going to go into what I, I got. <laughs> I will be right back. Okay, so, uh, I'm going to go ahead and go through what I've got. Uh, 
Genix, is it Genix or Genie X, or how do you prefer that? Um, regardless, uh, oh, primer, 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 primer. Amber, we'll go, oh, hi, Amber. Uh, so, like I said, I, I just like to use cheap spray paint for it, Amber. Like, if you're having problems with that, especially if you're using speed paint, like a semi-gloss, is a great thing to use on it because the uh, the smoother surface of a, a gloss or a semi-gloss really encourages it to move into the the recesses and stuff. So I I would say do that. Okay, so Mad Ducks, that is the busted mech from the beginning of Dugram. Uh Last week when we were talking about anime style mechs, uh, we brought up. Uh, Pardon me. We brought up Thunderhead Studios and some of their stuff, and I mentioned that they have anime-style mechs that uh, they posted for free on Thingiverse and maybe my mini factory. And this is one of uh, his models. So this is the uh, the Dugram from Dugram Fist of the Sun. That's from the first episode of the show, and. Uh, you see it in this abandoned state at the beginning, and I was apparently one of the first people that uh, printed and painted this. He was, and I showed it off to him. He was very happy with it. So, like this was all done with. Uh, there was a couple of base coats on it where I I worked in brown, and then I filled in some of the gaps, some of the places where you would expect to see bare metal. I filled in there. And then there were lots of washes, lots of dry brushing, and then just piles and piles of uh, pigment powders. And that's how I got that dusty sand look all over it. And I love it. Cookie, what do you think? I know you're in the chat. I saw you earlier. But that I love this thing. And I, I did this a while ago, but it's it's one of my favorite pieces. Uh, after that, I have, this was a piece that I did. Uh, this is a, uh, White Rook Studios Battlemaster. It's painted in Stuart Dragoons. That's a Free Worlds League, uh, unit. And, God, this is, I, I know I showed off one of these, uh, last week that was a very similar model that I did in Merrick Militia, so it was purple and red and blue, but it's just such a good model. And I'm feeling a lot better about my white on this one. So, I'm happy here. And, okay. And this is where I get to talk about what we're going to do tonight. This is another printed model from Darkfire Studios. This is, if any of you uh, held on to the Star Wars Expanded Universe after it left Bantam Spectra and went to Del Rey, and they moved into the New Jedi Order era stuff, this is Jaina Solo. Uh, this was my wife's favorite character in the EU when she was growing up. And I have. this is the second time I've painted this one. The first time she's in Imperial Black. And uh, the second time I, I had another one printed off. I wanted to take another swing at her and do her up in Rebel Colors. And this is where we talk about what I'm going to do tonight. For, as an early Father's Day gift, my lovely wife, who just checked in in the chat, hi, Gar, uh, got me a the entire set of speed paints from Army Painter. And I gave uh, Jaina here a little bit of a shot with it just to see how it would work. Jaina here was painted in about 20 minutes. And, like, I'm convinced that speed paint even compared to like contrast paint this shit is like witchcraft it's like shouldn't be this easy and for those of you that haven't had a chance to try it yet you know you're gonna have some variance in the colors and some are gonna work better than others but like this whole thing is painted just in speed paints and a little bit of acrylic white and that was just to clean up some of the mess that was on the parts that needed to be white so like this is fucking ridiculous. <laughs> it's it's witchcraft, and uh, I strongly encourage anyone that is wanting to be able to get reasonably good-looking stuff done quickly to do so. I think I have one more piece here. Let's see. 
Okay, yeah, and I painted this Executioner on stream maybe a month ago or so. I wasn't happy with how it turned out. I was rushing my work. The white wasn't real good on it. I stripped the paint off of it. I talked about that last week. I used a product called LA's Totally Awesome, which you can get at the Dollar Tree, or if you're lucky enough to have an Ollie's discount outlet nearby, I know they carry it also. And, like, this stuff is cheap, like a... Uh, quart of it at the Dollar Tree is like a dollar twenty-five, dollar fifty, whatever everything there is now. And just like leave shit in it for a few hours, hit it with a toothbrush, everything comes off. And I am much, much happier than I was before with this executioner. And it's the same style of paint job, it's the same color pattern, and everything about it is just so much smoother. Ugh Yeah, it's just better. So, like like I said last week, just keep in mind, in all likelihood, you're never going to destroy a model. Paint shit. If you're not happy with it, strip it and start over. That's it. So, let's see. What do I have? Ah, and that's back to start. So, we're going to go ahead and step into the live stream here. All right. So, here's what we've got tonight. Like I said, I want to try out some of these speed paints tonight. If you're uh, not entirely familiar with the ecosystem of the uh, Army Painter stuff, the regular Army Painter paints are, uh, I think they're white lid paints. They might be black. I don't remember. Their washes, they call them uh, quick shades, have red lids. Sometimes you'll just see the sets referred to as the red lid sets. The speed paints have silver caps. So, if you see the silver caps, you know that's a speed paint. And we're going to give some of those a shot tonight. And, and, Amba, because you told me, well, not because, like, uh, you should you should be happy with this. Um, we're going to paint stuff that's not a mech tonight. And, you know, I do have some mechs here I might show off, but... The speed paints are going to work better with stuff that's not mechs. So let's see how this goes. Yes, yes, Sparrow, they are in dropper bottles, which is better. And Thunderclap Sasquatch, uh, R.A. Salvatore did write that book. And I, I don't think it was Vector Prime. I know Salvatore wrote that one, but I don't think that's the one they're talking about. Yes, they killed Chewie. They they dropped a moon on Chewie to kill him. Okay, it was Vector Prime. Okay. Uh, Amba, what palette am I using? This is palette paper. So, it's kind of like... What did I do with the thing? This. If you keep sheet metal by your desk, be careful when you reach past it. This is just palette paper. So, this is... It's a poly-coated paper so that, you know, it the paper doesn't get wet. It's great. I love it. I use a quarter of a sheet at a time. Again, I got it at Ollie's when they had it. I bought several packs of it. It's great shit. It's great shit. <laughs> That's right, Mad Ducks. Chewie didn't die. Chewie killed that moon. Anyway. So, we're going to do some stuff tonight that's not mechs, although I'm going to show off some more mechs tonight, just because I have them, and, like, I got some new models, and I think they're really cool, and, like, I've got, I, I bought several mechs this week from uh, White Rook, so the, there's a Caesar, but then there's also, like, he's done just an entire line of urban mechs, just every urban mech variant you can think of, he's done, so there's the base urban mech and there's the ac20 urban mech and there's the r90 urban mech with the ppc he has the mrm irby he has the arrow 4 irby he's got irbys you've never heard of he does not have the canine irby which makes me sad so no flashy lights no sirens etc etc but that's stuff that i got from him uh he just released the hermes 2 model this week, so that's really cool. I'm looking forward to doing something with that to go with my other Merrick forces. He also released a clan mech called the Hammerhead. I think this is a clan mech. 
Um, I'm having some problems getting him to stick to a base, but again, really nice model. And of course, uh, because my son keeps asking for them, an Axeman. So at some point, we'll get to those. At some point. But tonight, I wanted to do stuff that was going to be particularly good for the speed paints. So some textured models with some organic shapes to them. Uh, we have some visually similar to, but legally distinct from, uh, Tolkien-esque models here. So we have someone that looks an awful lot like some kind of fellowship dwarf. I, I w couldn't begin to guess what kind of fellowship. Maybe if, I return. Ah, we've got Warlocks back. He's he's back yes. just in time to learn about the the uh, the fellowship of the bracelet. Oh, uh, dude! It, it, at least my painting station no longer looks like someone was murdered here. However, I have done that with fountain pen ink. That that is a thing that's happened. If you think, unfortunately, uh, you, unfortunately, unfortunately, these uh these are not inexpensive paints. Yeah. However, fortunately. Uh, I have a silicone uh, bit, or a silicone um, and a funnel. There we go, funnel. Yes, funnel. that's the funnel. Word. So I was able to uh, save about a quarter of the bottle of almost full paint. Yeah, I I have been known before to spill just a giant pile of paint onto my desk, almost always because this should shock no one. It's a contrast paint, so it's in a god-awful GW bottle, and tips over on my desk, and then I'm stuck, like, sopping it up one brushful at a time and putting it back into the pot. It's a miserable experience, but that shit's $8 a pot. Yep. Uh, no, I have, uh, and you saw it in that photo, I've got a little tray mm -hmm. that I uh, drop everything out onto, and when this went pop, it uh, went all over the tray, all over the desk behind everything, yeah. all over me. <laughs> yeah. So, like I, I was just telling everybody what we've got tonight. Um, okay. And uh, I don't know if you heard, but we have some uh, visually similar to, but legally distinct from Tolkien characters here. Yes, I did yes. hear that. Okay. That was right as I came back in. Okay, so uh, a Gimli-esque dwarf a uh, witch king of a kingdom that is assuredly not Angmar here. And like I said, these are just primed in white uh, spray paint. These these are going to take to speed paint really well. The last one that I've got is, I swear this is more Iron Maiden Power Slave than the cover of Power Slave by Iron Maiden. This is an amazing model here. And we're going to do something with this too. I'm kind of looking forward to that. <sighs> Ah, and uh, I, I also want to go ahead and throw in, as long as we're talking about Star Wars Extended Universe in the uh, the chat here, uh, I'm, I'm glad that they brought Zahn into the new books. Uh, I wish they would bring in, you know, some of uh, Mike Stackpole's stuff and, you know, Aaron Alston, bless his soul. And, uh, you know, on the other hand, I'm I'm glad I'm no longer saddled with Kevin J. Anderson, so I'm not going to worry about that. I have a half-hour rant about Darksaber I can go on, and I'm going to not do that right now. Listen, Darksaber is a thing. <laughs> that, not... that is what, that is the positive thing that I can give it. It, it, it would have made a good popcorn movie that was not that was legally distinct from Star Wars. What if A New Hope, but dumb? Yes. Yes, Cookie, I know it was cheesy fun. I still have opinions. Anyway, anyway, here's what we're going to do. We are going to put some speed paints on these things and see what happens. So Now, first now. and foremost, I'm going to I'm going to uh, play a game with you here. Oh, a game. Game what yourself. do you think is the hardest uh, color to put over white? White. White over white. Uh, no, no, that's not okay. even a joke. Like no, paint something, paint something white. It is a fucking nightmare. No, I know. Uh, but aside from that, what <laughs> is the next? What's the mm, probably the stuff that is typically uh, transparent anyway? So 
reds and yellows are going to suck. Not not as much as they suck going over black, but reds and yellows are going to suck. So, ha have you uh, played around and found out how well the yellows work, or no? I haven't yet. Uh, we're going to use... Uh, we can... We Oh, yeah, we're definitely going to use some on Power Slave here. So... We'll see how that goes. What the hell do I have in this? Oh, that's green flock. No fucking wonder I couldn't tell what it was. It's just a green bottle full of green sawdust flock. So all I saw was like texture. Anyway, what, anyway. What is this? <laughs> Let's see. Uh, zealot yellow. Zealot, the yellow of zealots, you know. Well, other nice thing about the speed paints. Incredible thing about the speed paints. Listen to this. You hear that? I'm depending on you here, Orlex. Can you hear that? Uh, nope. I okay. know what you're trying to go for, but I can't. Okay. There are Hold shakers. There's shakers see. in the bottles. Let me see. Yeah, that. That is my orc flesh or orc skin. Yeah, so this is the zealot. Yeah, they've all got a glass bead in them. It's amazing. Let's see. maybe I have to shake it harder. Rog. Anyway, anyway, yeah, uh, this this shit's just a dream. <laughs> like they've they've packaged it well. They've done every. It's in dropper bottles. Everything that you could conceivably want from it, they have done. So, strongly recommend that. Uh, okay, so we're going to start on this with, let's see. Ah, that's what I'm after. Sand Golem is the color I'm going to start with here. Sand Golem, if this is the color I think that it is, which I haven't yet found a good khaki for this, but I haven't been through the whole line. This should do what I want it to do. We're going to start here on the bandages with Power Slave and see what we get out of it. And hopefully okay. it gives me that. Okay, that's two... Do oh. that! Do that! There's one other thing that has struck me about this is, my God, does this not take a lot of this. Just No, it doesn't. It really doesn't. Unless you are looking for a really deep or a really dark color. Yeah, just like, uh, you don't, as long as you fill the belly of your brush well, like, you don't have to go back to your paint very often. Like, the two drops I just put on here, it's going to do this whole model easily. Now, that said, like, I'm just hitting the bandages on this, so. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily a whole lot of this, but... But what you need it to do, it's going to do. Okay, uh, Thunderclap Sasquatch, I haven't tried their uh, their regular paints and their metallics. I have not had opportunity to run into them and like buy a couple. I have used their sprays, but that's about all that I've been able to use. Yeah. Um, so, I use their uh, mixing balls, but uh, that, that's another story. I, I use BBs for that, just like straight daisy BBs, yep, which uh, ha has its own drawbacks to it. Stainless steel can be weird. And it's well, the, the, the only issue with that is finding them out here because for some reason, everybody has a BB gun and therefore wants them. Wow. And the, the stores cannot keep up. And so it is easier to find uh, the ball bearings than it is the BBs. It's a strange world we live in. Yeah. But, uh, oh, Hail Hydrate. Hail Hydrate. Hail Hydrate. <sighs> uh, that Pepsi is hitting just right. Looked like it was throwback. Um... That is the only proper uh, Pepsi to um, drink because uh, real sugar is quite a bit better tasting than is the uh, uh, high fructose corn syrup. I don't disagree with you. I'm going to throw into that. For those of you that have heard the myth of Mexican Coke, you do actually have to watch out for that because if you're not buying Mexican Coke near the U.S. border, frequently you will find bottles of Coke that are in Spanish 
that are not actually Mexican Coke and are made right. with HFCS. Um, up here, there are a couple of places that, uh, up here, by the way, folks, is, uh, the, the lovely, uh, Mitten, uh, state. Um, there are a couple of places around where you can actually find imported, uh, and if you do, then that's awesome. Uh, there are actually a couple places that import Pepsi, too, also in glass bottles. Huh. Uh, but that is quite a bit harder to find. It's a smaller market share. I'm not too surprised. You know, I feel like our good friend here, the Witch King of a kingdom adjacent to Angmar, could probably use something darker than that. Purple. Purple. Purple! What do y'all think? Purple? Uh, you know, let's... Let's do Power Slave's cloak in purple. That sounds like a good idea. I was going to do it in blue, but purple's not a bad thought. Let's see which part. Let's go with the ooh, purple alchemy. Being being in the south near Texas. Well, let me tell you, being in the south of Texas, yeah, that shit's gettable. Yeah. I just try not to drink too much. Uh, I try not to drink my calories unless it's alcohol. Uh, trust me, I've got enough alcohol on top of my fridge to last a lifetime. Oh, the so only a, issue, a week or only, so? Uh, <laughs> uh, the only issue is that I don't drink except when there are people over. Oh, you see, uh, the, the internet is like having people over, but they can't see you not wearing pants. Stop knowing my secrets. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Black Pants Legion, folks. Um, we or, don't wear, or... we don't actually wear the pants. We just talk about them. I wore pants earlier. No. <laughs> I uh, wore but... pants at work today, and now I'm wearing basketball shorts. Such is my right. Uh, yeah, kinda. <laughs> That, no, that wasn't me imitating you. That's that's what I'm doing. Because it is 9.30 on a Thursday night, and I worked my ass off on dead all day, and by God, basketball shorts and bourbon it is. Sounds like a good little mix there to me. Let's see. And we do have to still work into underneath this you know this might actually warrant the darker purple but we're gonna go with this for now and um let me tell you something i have worked with the magus purple and the shyish purple in contrast and this is applying so much better and like i can actually show that off here in a minute i've still got the, the magus purple relatively handy let's see for the purposes of doing this on stream so everyone can see what's going on i'll show you the difference on the same model you won't get this on literally any youtube channel that's talked about it i mean you will but shut up let's see notorious ben agreed entirely okay okay and once again, because y'all are here, and I'm going to use a contrast paint, and it's in a contemptible Citadel bottle. Spring clamps are your friends. Use them. Mad Ducks, I feel like you made half of those words up. Uh... Okay, I'm thunderclap. I'm not saying the pants are not worn. I'm saying I'm not currently wearing the pants. Oh, okay, okay. They're Gaelic. I gotcha. They're <laughs> they're they're Albion Gaelic. What am I painting? Well, Badger, I am painting a number of models that are from the uh, from RN Studio. Uh, a 3D modeler that you can find on Patreon in my mini factory who has done several of the pieces that I've shown. Uh, for those of you that remember early in the show, I had a, uh, 
a model of Kefka in the opening lineup, and uh, he did that one and a number of others. So, Kefka Palazzo is from Final Fantasy VI, for those of you that are... Uncultured? No. Is that where you were going? No, I wasn't going to say uncultured, I was just going to say tragically young. Okay, so, this... Back, this... back when video games were made... And they were just finished. You didn't have to wait for day one updates and DLC and all this other stuff for your game to I actually mean, to be, be playable. To be fair, there were games at that age that, that had what we would call today DLC. It's just at the time they were called expansion packs. Yes, you were paying um, a little less than the game for essentially another a game. whole other game. <laughs> Okay, so this this that we've already painted here is Purple Alchemy from Speed Paint. The equivalent in contrast paint is Magos Purple. That's what I have on the brush right now, and I'm going to put it up here. And when I say it is equivalent, that's not the fairest thing. It's not quite the same tone, but it is as, as close as there is. And I can already tell you applying it here... It's just not going on as nicely. Like, it's doing a fine job, but I'm not as happy with it. Like, it's not as... It's not as saturated, and it's not coming off the brush as nicely. So, you know, maybe, maybe that's a subjective. Maybe y'all like it more... Maybe I, I feel like I have to apply a lot more of it to get a similar effect. So like really get a bunch on the brush and then come in and apply it quite heavily. Make sure it doesn't settle too much. Make sure it doesn't pool, that kind of thing. But anyway, there we go. There's... That's, that's kind of the difference is like, I feel like with the contrast paints, I'm having to come back in and do more touch up and use more paint for the same effect. And that is independent of the color here. Like the colors are similar, but they're not exactly the same. The Magus purple is a little cooler in hue and a little, a little darker. I'm trying to be objective here, but like I really right. am liking the speed paint more. I am going. I'm not going to lie. Uh, the announcement recently that there were going to be more shades to come out in um, in, in the contrast Citadel line. Contrast, there were a couple that were in there that have my interest. Yeah, and that's fair. I'm just wondering how many more of them are going to be gray or brown, because there's there's a lot of gray and brown. Uh, today they actually released a spread of exactly what was going to be coming out. How many of them are gray and brown? Uh, I'll look it up. I'll okay. pull it up for us. This is mostly a joke on my part, because there's just a lot of gray and brown. Like, even in the speed paint line, I've got three grays. It's a lot of gray. It might be too much gray, but, you know, it, you know, for different stuff, I guess. We'll live with it. And here's the other thing. If you don't like it, you don't have to buy it. Yeah, and in all honesty, um, I'm waiting on a scale 75 order to come in uh, with a full grayscale paint set. Okay. Because there are a lot of different grays. Okay, I I'm going to tell you I have an entire, like I think I have 10 paints up on my paint rack that are all different shades of gray. Yeah. So... <sighs> And it all came out of one Viejo pack that's like, it was laughable when I first saw it, and then suddenly I needed subtle variations of gray, and it was like, hey, you know what you can get? You can get the United States Air Force gray set that covers every color of gray the Air Force has used since the 50s, and it's just... Well, fuck, that wasn't supposed to be useful. And here we are. It's extremely useful. By the way, there is the link to the page. It looks like Where did about, you drop it? Uh, Discord. Okay, put it in the Twitch chat. Twitch chat? You yeah. bet. Let people see. Let the people see. 
it looks like, um, based off of what I'm seeing here, um, there are two browns, a black, and a lot of other actual colors. You know... Um, because we're looking at Iron Jaws Yellow, Leviathan Purple, uh, Polar Glacier, which is one of the ones that I actually have my eyes on. I have a question. Yeah. I'm And, like, clearly nobody has an answer for this. And this isn't me trying to shit on it. I need to make that clear. I am genuinely curious. What could... The, and I saw the new black. I did see that when they first made the announcement. And I thought to myself... How is this possibly different than Black Templar? You already have a black contrast. Why did you make another black contrast? Okay, um, I already know that you know national standards and so on and so forth. They yeah. are trying they are trying to work at a different level for the national standard. And my belief is that they are trying oh. to have a different um, shade of black. <laughs> Shades of black. There we go. That's what we needed. Hey, we got a new sub. Or we've awesome. got we've got a second we've got a second month sub. Thank you much, Geth. Oh, that's that's great. I love it when yeah. we get new subs. I do too. But uh, it's one of these that, no, I'm not, um, you know, pulling for it or hoping that it does well or anything else. But that Glacier Blue, mm -hmm. I've wanted to do an Eldar army for years that is, excuse me, kind of Beltan. But instead of the green, it's like an ice blue. Okay, so it's like a very vibrant kind of light blue? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. And seeing that come out, I'm just going, ooh. <laughs> ooh, I, I, I would like to try. <laughs> oh, yeah. Please give. We'll try. <laughs> Many thanks. Much like. Yes. Well, uh, uh, not sure about the mini thanks or the much like yet because I haven't gotten to, to you know my hands on it. Well, if they're oh, willing to send it to you, then we oh, are yeah. we can be bought. I mean, I can't promise things are going to turn out the way anybody that wants to buy us thinks they're going to turn out or wants them to turn out. But uh, uh, Mantis Warrior Green might be good for half of Orientasars. No, I'm thinking of Orlov Grenadiers. Orlov Grenadiers are two different shades. Sorry. No, oh, don't worry about it. Uh, which one did you say? Uh, Mantis in, Warrior Green? In, in chat here, uh, Square was saying Mantis Warrior Green would be good for Orient Hussars, and I was confusing that with Orloff Grenadiers. Gotcha. Um, yeah, Mantis Warrior Green is an interesting little color there. But I did find it quite interesting, and this is one that you're going to have to take a look at, Para. The striking scorpion green, the swatch that they have down there for it. Let's take a look, see. Um, you can see where the pigment has pooled and how they've had to drag it out. So the question is, is Ooh, how is that? That's, that's not the way that's supposed to go. No, Wait, it is not. <laughs> Isn't that already basically the warp green from the primary set? Or is warp green not a uh, contrast? Um, <clears throat> you mean uh, warp lightning contrast? Yeah, that, yeah. No, warp lightning is like an emerald green. Okay. okay. I know this because it is sitting in front of me. How dare you, sir? Use your, like, powers of observation and such to answer questions. Uh, honestly, I like the warp lightning. Um, it's been something, uh, so I, I have a thing with British racing green. We've had this conversation, what is yep. and is not, and what may or may not be. Right. British racing green metallic. And I have 
used that warp lightning contrast over top of a base of silver, and in two coats, it comes up as being essentially British racing green metallic. That is hard to argue with. If you want to drive a little car that runs 70% of the time, that's a good thing to have. 70% might be generous. Well, I mean, it's on my mechs. Well, I mean, it depends on which mechs. Some of them might run 70% of the time. <laughs> hey, man, I'm going to tell you what. I went out there and I put an LS in my catapult the other day, man. It seems to go like a stink on something with stinky, man. I'm going to tell you what. That's right. We're LS swapping catapults in here, guys. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> man, we got that new LS engine. That's what's what runs on the fusion power, man. I'm gonna tell you what, that Corvette goes like uh just goes like stink, man. I'm gonna tell you what. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you what, it works real well and goes on <laughs> the Hey man, I'm gonna tell you that you know, you get there in that mech and you go me later, me 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 later, Alpha Strike Man, and they just blow up, man. That's the best thing you ever did say, I tell you what. Super Chief, mm -hmm. if you're going to challenge me to boom hour my way out of something, I am going to come up with some mad gibberish. Well, no, no, there, government's got a uh, <laughs> hey, bird. The birds are uh, just a. Uh, uh, hey, man, I'm going to tell you uh, what, government done killed a lot of birds, man. They done placed them with drones, man. They're just flying up there and go snip, 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 taking all them pictures, man. I'm going to tell you what. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know where that comes from. I'm not sitting here thinking about it. It's just pouring out of my mouth. Like, a thunderclap? Maybe you're a Texan. That might be it. Like, I, I grew up listening to Hillbilly. It's close enough I got it. The, th the funny thing for me about Boomhauer was never that I couldn't understand him. It was that, like, the stuff he was saying was just plain gibberish, and it was fun to listen to. Or he talked about the internet and said, man, man, get on that old internet there, and you just go on that www.click-click-click-click-click-click, man, and just, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, you get a lot of stuff and go ahead and... Mm -hmm. See, that's the thing. Like, there are words actually in there. And it's not its mm -hmm. not just gibberish. I know them's peoples. <laughs> See, I, I had Appalachian hillbillies. They're also markedly different. Uh, see, my, my issue with all of this is uh, my uh, family comes from uh, the more rural side of uh, Kentucky. So I can understand exactly about half of it. I'm going to tell you something real quick. We have to stop here for a moment, folks. We call this a technical break. We will be back in 30 seconds, okay? 30 seconds, don't run off, I promise. No problem. We're back. We have worked out our Appalachian-ness. Because, as it turns out, his people and my people are within a couple of hours of each other. In location redacted. Anyway. Anyway. What were we doing? Were we painting uh, stuff here? Is that what we do here? Yeah, that that I do believe that that is what we do. Oh. Well. Shit, I thought we were car dealership. Don't get me started on that. Hey, man, come on down here to Bill Davy and Chevrolet. We got the finest new Chevrolets on Van Zandt, man. Just get on down here. <laughs> Fuck you, Baltimore. Man, just get on in here, and I'm going to tell you what. You ain't never seen no new Chevrolet. Get the get the 3077 Corvette. It ain't not, like nothing you ever did drive before. <laughs> Thanks, Cookie. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Now I have to see what that looks like. 
Oh, Cookie, oh, you're no. a blessing. I love you. Hey man, I'm gonna tell you that you know you get there and that man can do it. Me, 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 later. Alpha Strike man, they just blow up, man. That's the best thing you ever did say. I tell you what. There we go. No, I didn't eat the paints. Oh, Cookie, you're amazing. Now, now I've got my own clip in the WBPL archive. It just happens to be me boom hiring. Oh. I, you see, I've fun. never, I, I don't, I don't understand this one. I have never drunk the paint, and I've never eaten the paint. Like I don't. Then can you, then can you truly call yourself a painter? Well, you see, here's the thing. Let's let's stop here for just a second. I've always heard people talk about, oh, I use this mug f to wash my brushes. I use a salsa jar. Actually, this is a pepper jelly jar, but it is effectively a salsa jar, and then I drink from. A glass because I'm a civilized fucking human being. <laughs> Para? Yes. You have you have my photo from earlier still, yes? Yes. Let me ask you something. Does it have my paint water holder on it? Uh I actually have to pull it back up. Let's take I did edit the picture so that it would not turn fucking sideways in OBS again, so I don't have the full thing. Now, let me okay. let me pull back up the Discord and see what we've got. You, you, you I, just uh... oh wow, you appear to have stolen a coffee mug from a Waffle House. From my mother. Well, your mother has some very Waffle House cups. Uh, those are the old cups, and yes, th they were <laughs> they... given to her when she got married. Yeah. So. Hence the reason that uh, she was fine with me taking this one. But, you know, don't go uh, dissing people for using mugs just yet. Well, I mean, let's let's be fair for a second. I love Waffle House. I wish that there were some of them in this great mitten. I have looked. There is like two Waffle Houses in Texas. And I don't understand how that's a fucking thing. Here's the thing. In the city in which I live, in South South Texas, in the uh, the the municipality of uh, location redacted, there was a Waffle House, and it <laughs> closed. My cat. I didn't know that water. shit could happen. Oh yeah. I've never heard of a Waffle House closing. I've seen cities fold before Waffle Houses. You know, it's a hard day when the Waffle House closes. Hey, man, I'm going on down to the Waffle House the other day, man. They done closed up their doors. I didn't know they had to. I didn't know them doors had locks, man. I'm sorry, Sparrow. Are you, are you, are you joshing me here? Like, is Citadel selling water pots, or are you just making a joke about how god awful their paint pots are? Because, like, I know they'll sell anything they think they can get away with. We await. Like, this isn't hands. something you already know about, is it, Warlocks? You're not going to be like, oh, yeah, they've totally got water cups that say Citadel on the side of them. Mm, right off the top of my head? No, I don't know about any of them. Uh, okay. Probably have them, but uh, we don't have them at my store. Because they're dumb, right? Kind of like the priming sticks are dumb. We do have those. And they're dumb, aren't they? Because, yes. like, like, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I understand the need for such a tool, right? Mm -hmm. I understand how, like, if you want to prime a whole bunch of shit at once, you need to be able to hold a whole bunch of things at once. So, oh God. Um, Super Chief said, just checked, it's real. Oh, no. I don't want to live on this planet anymore. The, the link has been posted. I'm not buying it. I'm, no. Like, this is a hard pass. This is not happening. No, no, I, I am not <laughs> saying to... Do, oh, oh, God. Like, last week, somebody mentioned, like, a, a, a line of paints that was something rain. And I can't for the life of me remember what it was. But my wife was in chat, and then... Chocolate rain? Yes, the, the, chocolate, ra the chocolate rain paint line. And then my wife, like, ordered me these rain paints. I haven't gotten them yet, but I'll maybe if they're here in the next week, I'll try them. But here's the thing. 
I'm not I'm not going to try everything the chat comes up with, or else I'm going to end up owning a, a MiG-29 before Tex does. <laughs> but, like, okay, you have a priming stick. It is effectively a, sti a stick that is perpendicular to the handle with two rubber bands on it. This is what Citadel is selling. You know what else you could do, right? It's a paint stick with blue tack on it. You know what this cost me? Fucking nothing. Cost me nothing. Because, like, Home Depot will give you the fucking paint stick. I still need blue tack, but... It's a dollar! What my it's a primary... fucking dollar! <laughs> yes, but, uh, I need to find a place that sells it out. Walmart! <laughs> you, this may surprise you. I do not live by a Walmart. Now I have to figure out what sticks you live in. Not just these sticks, but like there's particular sticks. Wow. Let me show you what my priming solution has been for the past 12 years. Oh no. How do you have a gaming store stocking Citadel stuff nearby and not a Walmart? What kind of, like, gaslighting is this? <laughs> Oh, th there's a Walmart by the game store. I just, it's not near me. It's near your place of business. Yeah, th listen, yeah. if you're getting up and going to work, you can drop in Walmart and be like, hey man, I need me some blue tacker, man. Let me go on into the office supply section and get me some of that stuff with sticks and posters up on the walls, man. And there is my uh, priming solution. And the solution to priming, ladies and gentlemen. According to Warlax, this is the priming. Yeah, that's yeah, it's a uh, cardboard box. That's exactly what I use. A cardboard box tied on its side, or tied on side, sat on its side, so that you spray shit into it. Is exactly what I do. Yeah. Now, now remember, it is very important. This is side box. Yes, side box. It's very, very much like. Having side corn, except it's a box. Yes. Everyone, it is you, can, you can feel confident in that you get the BPL promise. Side corn is like a box on its side. No more questions. I break your hands. He lives in the Soviet moon, moonion. I didn't know you were moon Stalin. Uh, apparently I am. Fucking oh oh we that's a big message there that's all highlight y'all listen up come on in down to please see urban mech emporium self defense man I'm gonna tell you what I'm tell you what we got here we got them that, that are urban mech R sixes man we got that the urban mech R sixty three which got a couple of a dings there where with the other dealership set and awesome on top of them, man and they have a few lads but we're gonna sell that good old price man we got this R sixty eight you can afford all them dang old MRMs man I'm gonna tell you what it kind of expensive but if you get a ghost bear problem man it'll do your job up right I tell you what. <laughs> The secret to the boom hour is to turn off your brain. And that's all turn I can on, do. Turn off brain. Speak. If you turn off brain. Buy game stock. Hoddle. I have been known to do this in Hillbilly Speak. And it only works as long as nobody makes me laugh. Because the moment someone makes me laugh, it's gone. Because I can't be paying any attention to what I'm actually doing. If I pay attention to the words that come out of my mouth as I'm doing this, I will laugh and it'll break the spell. And it's a weird spell. The spell will break at midnight. Like it's fourth year defense against the dark arts boom harrisms. <laughs> it's like whenever you have a wizard school uh, in in uh, the uh, Texas panhandle. I, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you what. And I'm gonna tell you what. The, the, I, them dark I'll wizards. I'll ain't tell got you no what. I'm gonna tell you what. The, I, the them dark wizards. They don't have chance, man. Man, I'm gonna tell you what. They come on in here, man, and they're gonna say it like that. They experience almost, man, or whatever. I'm just gonna say it like, hey, man, you can't be coming in here doing that and just being like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do it if I could ever at you, man. I'm just gonna be like, diver day or fifteen, man. I'm gonna tell you what. Yeah, man, 44 Magnum, what? 
Okay, Louisiana is like the ultimate in like, fuck man, I don't know. I, I don't I don't have any idea what the <laughs> options here are on accent. They could be fucking anything. What have Notorious you got there? Ben. Well, yeah. we, Notorious we, Ben, that is the best spell. Yes. 300 Blackout is an excellent spell. That's a fifth year defense against the Dark Arts spell. What have you got there? Oh, this, this is the 6.5 Creedmoor spell. It comes out of a very special wand. <laughs> What kind of a wand is that? Well, it comes with a three-day waiting period. Or, of course, you have um, the, the lovely uh, uh, BPL special, the 4570, which is... Oh. Uh, uh, what would you say? Like a third year? No, man, that's a seventh year spell. Like, that's a... I need to put down an angry troll now. Like that... That's that's a Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part Two level level spell right there. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part Seventeen. <laughs> Harry Potter and the Deathly Fuck Man. That's a lot of troll. <laughs> now, man, I don't need no more than dang old eight, forty-five ACP spell, man. I'm gonna do that, that uh, two world wars, man, and a wizard war. I'm just gonna that ain't nothing that thing can't handle, man. Oh, God. Y'all are just, like, goading me into more... Yeah. <laughs> look at chat. Just just look at chat. You'll get it. You just... Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollow Points. Oh, man. Chat, you guys are uh, kind of on fire tonight. Oh, this is amazing. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollow Hollow points. I'm feeling right at home. Hey man, what you got there, man? I got Harry Potter and the, you know, the the, the Glock Forty. <laughs> it's the Glock Forty. Well, it's the cheapest wand you can buy. What do you mean wand, man? Shut up! <laughs> don't ask questions you don't want answers to. No, man, I need to know the answer. To I that. cast Glock. Glock, 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 Glock. <laughs> you could cast like the European version. I casted the Beretta. Beretta, Beretta, Beretta. Yes, I know, I know Glock is Austrian. Nobody has to tell me this. I'm having fun with it anyway. We're going to go with the. the the Italian one that goes, uh, Beretta! Oh. Wait, what? what is the Ralph Bakshi thing that we're doing now? Ralph ba Oh, it's Ralph Bakshi's it. Wizards. Man, that is a trippy film. H und K. H und K. <laughs> Roller block delay. <laughs> What do you do here? We make a gun that is uh, based on 70, 80 year old design. Why do you do that? Is efficient. But like, can, uh, could, couldn't you do like a, a gas impingement? No, no gas impingement. Roller block only. <laughs> Thank you, Cookie. Why, why do you do that? Because it works. Because we charge many more monies for. Cast Glock. That's what's going to get written down tonight. It's going to be Boom Harrowing and Glock. I'm willing to accept this for the night. Sounds like a pretty good night. You know. All right, guys, that's it. Uh, <laughs> have a good night. Uh, pack it up, uh, guys. It that's the end of the series. We're never going to top this. Don't don't pack it up. We're we're still here. I'm still putting paint on Power Slave here. I'm going to continue to call him Power Slave just because like fuck this is the most Iron Maiden model I've ever seen that isn't branded as an Iron Maiden thing. And like I know I'm saying that like out loud. So like Bruce Dickinson is homing in on my location as we speak. Bruce Dickinson would like to know your location. <laughs> no, 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 Bruce. No. 
No. No. I want to know your location. I am not telling my location to an angry death metal, well, not death metal, but an angry aging metal singer who I know has a commercial pilot's license. I'm not fucking around with that. I don't need a 737 in my house. Master of puppets, bitch. <laughs> That's Metallica. Uh, yeah. Okay, so, so we're clear the law 99999999. The Bruce Dickinson that's in that sketch is actually fictional. The uh, the cowbell sketch Bruce Dickinson is not a real person. This is disappointing. I know, but I've always had fun pretending that it's the lead singer of uh, Iron Maiden. So, we can continue yeah, on that one. To, to be fair, uh, you said Iron Maiden, we kept going, and then my brain just shut off and was like, oh yeah, we're talking about Metallica. No. Uh, I'm going to have to sit you down and educate you on, like, Aces High and Power Slave. And... Yeah, thank you, Super Chief. Aces High. Because Bruce Dickinson has an inhuman vocal range. Like, he has an operatic... I think it's a five octave vocal range. It's fucking preposterous. Okay. He has a wider range, as I'm remembering. I could be wrong about this. He might have a wider range than, uh, than, you know, fucking names that Freddie Mercury. That's what I was looking for. Four octave. Okay. 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 He might be at the same range as Freddie Mercury then. Okay, yes, but the man is like 80 now, Super Chief. Let's cut him, cut him some slack. Nope, no slack cut. <laughs> Super Chief is all like, no, but no, but he can't do there, this. There shall be no slack. There shall be, he, he must return to the office to work. There shall be no slack. That's a... It that's, should be very painful. That's a back-to-office joke. Oh, you. That's a back-to-office joke for those of you that uh, have had to go through that. It would be very painful. Where the fuck did my pallid bone go? Ah, oh, there it is. There it is. Pallid, pallid bone. <laughs> That's the painful. lost Herodric pallid bone. Oh, you found the Herodric bone, did this you? This is the lost Herodric Cuisinart. You put things in here and blend them up and make something new with them. Don't ask questions. Just drink it. I'm Deckard Bane. <laughs> yes. Stay a while and listen. Stay a while and listen to my manifesto. Was Paul Diano the uh, lead singer that Iron Maiden had just for uh, Phantom of the Opera? That album? <laughs> but I have the story! Wouldn't you like to hear it, Notorious Ben? <laughs> Cookie, why the fuck do you think anybody's in here listening to me other than ridiculous shit that comes out of my mouth hole? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tonight on WBPL 76. Yeah, so I went down in there least... into the uh into the, the old internet there and I and it doesn't work. They're they're diametrically opposed. I can't do it. <laughs> Stay a while and listen. <laughs> Boom Howard's Boom Howard's too fast and Deckard's too slow. They don't mix. I can't find it. I'm gonna have to work on that. Okay, I'm gonna stop here on Power Slave for now. And like he's not done, but he's base coded, and like he's ready for highlights at this point. But let's take a look at this real quick. This is where we've gotten almost entirely with just speed paints or contrast paints. Getting back to the whole idea of this fucking channel. You know, this thing that we do where we talk about, where we talk about like painting and stuff, you know, where like this where is the we, show. Where we, 
Yeah, where we go off on random tangents all yeah, the time. Yeah, like this week I'm not talking about cars. Apparently I'm talking about Deckard Kane, Boomhauer, and car dealerships on Van Sant. I don't even know what the fuck I'm doing anymore. But like, okay, speed paint. Speed paint stuff. This is fucking amazing. Like, this cuts out a couple of whole steps here. I don't have to put a wash on this. I don't really have to highlight the parts of this that I put speed paint on, except like, there's a couple of points. I'll point them out right here. The face needs a little bit of highlights with some like pale sand or something. The gold needs some, but the gold wasn't a contrast paint. Maybe the bandages could use some khaki here and there. I need to go over some of the parts here where there are like scorpions or something on the armor with gold, but like, that like cut out a whole fucking step. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Spare, you think we're only 10% above our regular crazy? <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't he know. He does not know my regular crazy. <laughs> no, we are not here for the normal level of crazy. <laughs> But I have the story. You all signed you on like for to much crazy tonight. Ben? Much, much crazy. <laughs> Cookie, why the fuck do you think anybody's in here? <laughs> you know, my wait, Cookie, 4th. my favorite. No, yeah. actually, that was Ben. Ben, my favorite part of that clip you just made is me cursing at Cookie over why the fuck does, do, do you think anyone's here? That's the best part. <laughs> Just remember, all of you, July 4th, uh, you, you. What about July 4th? What did I miss? Where, <laughs> where are we? Where are my grandchildren? Okay, okay, so we're done with Power Slave for now. I'll go through, I'll do some more highlighting on him, although, frankly, parts of him already look amazing. Like, the bone parts are good, the gold parts need to, like, he's, he's already pretty good. The purple parts are pretty well done. I'm happy. Let's move on. Let's do Not Gimli. I'm going to do Not Gimli. Not Gimli is going to get a lot of... In uh, Citadel, this would be Snakebite Leather is what I'd use. But, but, in Speed Paints, I have the option... Now, I'm not saying Contrast doesn't have these options. I'm saying I don't have them. I took some advice on getting specific citadel paint citadel contrast paints for specific uses when i listened to uncle adam on tabletop minions he was like snake bite leather is the fucking best thing that's ever been fucking sold i'm gonna get that Dim dimly yes we're gonna go with dimly anyway so i've got two different colors of brown speed paint here hardened leather and dark wood and we're gonna try both of them here we're going to shake the fuck out of them real quick with it because they have shakers and, you know, this is better. And at some point, I'm still going to get a Vortex shaker. We'll see how it is. You don't know how crazy... You don't know crazy until you play Are You a Werewolf with a bunch of drunk dungeon masters at the end of Gen Con. You know... Okay, Lord Trowa, that's what I've been saying all fucking night. This shit is witchcraft. And, like, it's also have the press contrast paint. So, like, invest. Stonks. And this is hardened leather. This is not your average leather. This is leather. What's been hardened? What's been hardened? Oh, man, search. yeah, man, we've got this, uh, this, uh, speed paint man's flasher and that normal paint. And you just get that shit on in there, man. It just does that, like, highlight and shadow, man. It's a base coat. It's like one thin coat, man. I'm going to tell you what. God, did I just boom Hauer speed paint? Yes, you did. Oh my God, I'm not going to get out of this for a while. I'm stuck in boom Hauer. Did I just let you boom Hauer speed paint? You might well, have. That's another question. Oh God, but another question, which uh, you might not want to answer to me. I'm going to tell you what, man. I do that speed paint stuff. I don't know if anybody here in chat. What would I recommend for a first-time model or mini paint? Okay, that depends. Like, when you say first-time, like, have you ever painted anything? Then that's really the question. Like, if you're, if you're talking about, 
like I've never painted a fucking thing in my life, then like that's going to be different than I have previously worked in 2D media. But if if, if, if I might, if I might, you might. Um, for either of them, if you're looking to start painting minis and get into all of that, the Dungeons and Dragons box set starters. Um, I, I believe the those are adventurers kit, uh, the under dark and stuff like that. They're Vallejo. They're excellent. You get a brush, How you many? get like nine or 10 paints and you get uh, a mini in there that is exclusive to that box. Okay. Now I have to ask a question. How many fucking deals does wizards have with mini and paint companies? Because you're throwing that out there. It's like Vallejo has this. I know Army Painter has a D and D line. I know Wiz Kids has a D and D line. What Reaper. The Re well, I don't think Reaper's officially licensed. I think Reaper's doing D and D adjacent. Okay. Um, to be honest, I don't know, but I do know that those uh, kits are really good kits for starters. Yes, and but okay, if you're looking for like, I want to paint something and I've never painted it. I've never painted anything. Like, as much... Okay. Let's take a stop here for just a second. I'm going to stop, and I'm going to put everything down, and I'm going to address you directly. Because I don't usually like to pimp GW stuff just because, like, I don't like their business practices. I don't like the way they treat their employees. I don't like the way they treat their content creators. I understand a lot of people like their shit. I understand they make very high quality models. Okay? I am willing to give that up. If you are looking for a high quality mini to paint where you have lots of references, it is hard to be doing something like picking up a five pack of Primaris Intercessors and following whatever guide they have. Now, Aside from that, if the you're... Assault Intercessors uh, starter box. Yeah. Like and the you don't even have you don't even have to get that. You can get like there there are little squad packs. It's like, oh yes, in this box you get like five intercessors or ten uh uh Skitarii or you know, for forty five dollars you'll get uh ten guardsmen or whatever. Like they're they're really good models. But if you want to try something else then there's tons of other options. Reaper Bones is a great option. Reaper Bones are plastic minis. They come as, for the most part, I'm not going to say always, but for the most part, they come pre-assembled. They're reasonably good quality. They're not tremendously expensive. Warlex has something to say about that. I mm. feel, did you have something to say about Reaper Bones? Oh, no. I'm okay. just uh, actually grabbing uh, something here for our lovely audience. Okay. So, like, based off of what you've been saying, because um, they have the Space Marine uh, paint set um, that is available from GW that is three assault intercessors, all of the paint that you need, and a brush. Would the paint for that happen to be blue? Uh, yes. Shock! Shock and awe! It would happen to be, uh, Ultramarines. Yep. No! Definitely. Anyway. But anyway. That being said... If you want to try something different, Reaper Bones are good. Uh, if you have a Barnes & Noble nearby you, this is a fucking great deal. Right here. Like the Wolf Dragoons Assault Star. If you want to do mechs... This is a great place to start. It gives you a clan mech, gives you a bunch of iconic inner sphere mechs. It's great. It's $25, I think. And like in the realm of miniatures, $25 is amazing, especially considering like this is this is what you need to play a game. Like, yeah, you need the rules and that kind of shit, but this is enough minis to play the game. Now, that said, if you want to try paints, like, get yourself a 
rattle can set of uh, just like a rattle can spray paint white usually matte matte is good paint if you're going to use something like uh like the speed paints then get yourself a semi-gloss or a gloss the difference among all those like i don't aside from the fact that everybody knows like matte is not shiny and like semi-gloss is a little shiny and gloss is shiny like the difference there is the surface texture of the paint the matte paints have flatteners in them so that they don't leave as smooth a surface so if you put that on a model then paint will stick to it better because there's effectively a tooth on the surface if you use a gloss paint then shit can move around real easy because it's very smooth if you're going to use a speed paint or a contrast paint or a wash or whatever a smooth surface helps shit move around there that's what you get so like for a new person like the wolf's dragoon box set is great if you can find a game store that has just like the battletech inner sphere lances which i'll grab one of those i have several of them still in the box just to show you hi we have quite a few of them stop on in Yes, back here at Location Redacted, we have a great number of such things. Well, the thing is, I just don't want to, uh, you know, step on uh, step on toes or anything like that. If you want to know where my shop is... Like, if you want to free. drop a link, go for it. I'm not, I'm not the police. Okay, so, like, this is an Inner Sphere box set. If you want to get on to... Um, if you want to order it from Warlax's shop, you can do that. If you want to get from Miniature Market, you can do that. The MSRP on these is 20 bucks. It's four mechs. It's a full lance. First time chat. Uh, which man stream? Which man stream are you coming from? Is your own pleasure? Anyway, like this shit... This is 20 bucks MSRP. You can get it less expensive. Do that if that's what you want. And just for real quick, this is the Intersphere uh, Heavy Battle. So that's a Night Star. That's a uh, Cataphract, uh, Bushwhacker, and an Axeman. I think it's an Axeman. I don't think it's... Yes, it's an Axeman. It's not a Hatchetman. It is an Axeman. It's hard to see him in there, but it's an Axeman. Anyway, yeah, it's a great deal. And like I said, if you get on, if you look for it somewhere else, you'll have to pay shipping for it, but you can get it for less. Or you can order it from Warlax, which support your local game store. If you have a local game store that's selling this shit, support the local game store so that you can build a scene there. Uh, th that is exactly what we're doing currently. Um, the idea of having the uh, Crusade League going on uh, has jump started a bunch of different stuff and people coming around and playing right now so uh lord phantom real quick i can't tell you if they're u.s only i can tell you a uh, notorious ben have a good night uh i can tell you these were kickstarter mechs so like i assume that there's something in place to distribute those in europe in australia wherever i'm not going to promise you that because i don't work for catalyst if, Cat if Catalyst is watching and they'd like to say, hey, Parallax, we'd like to give you, like, money or supplies or whatnot, I'll be happy, happy to do that for them. But they're not, so that's fine. But, uh, yeah, like, these are official Catalyst mechs. They're, you know, the plastics from the Kickstarter. The what Wolves I, Dragoons are not from the Kickstarter. The Wolves Dragoons are a Barnes & Noble exclusive. Yes, they are. Uh, different shops ha are getting different exclusives. Yes, uh, that's... Well, that's for later this year. For when, as they move forward this year, there will be new exclusives for certain vendors. I'm not familiar with all of them immediately, but, like, a lot of them up front are going to be variations on the Kickstarter max. Like, everything here that was in... I have put it down, and it's right here. Yeah. Everything that's in here was otherwise available in a Kickstarter pack. 
So like none of these are exclusive. Some of the poses might be different. I think, I think the blackjack is different. But regardless, mm -hmm. as they move forward, there will be more exclusive packs of mechs for whatever. So yeah, keep your eye out on those. Uh, those announcements are floating around. Yeah, I uh, I pre-ordered mine from Barnes and Noble, and then I got to the store and they had fucking plenty. But I'm still glad I did. The last time I was in, they didn't have anything. Like the time before I went into Barnes and Noble, they had the uh, the salvage boxes, and their blind packs. They are expensive. A How much are Barnes and Noble selling them for? Eight bucks. Yeah, that's what we're selling them for too. Eight bucks is. Yeah, I I, right right now. I I understand. I'm saying like compared to getting them in a box like this, where yeah. they're like five dollars a piece, that's a sixty percent increase in price to get the blind pack and you don't know what's in it. Don't get me wrong, I bought one anyway, and I went back to try to buy another one, and they were out. Oh yeah, the, they have been just selling incredibly well. Thank you, Night Owl, for dropping that in there. So if anyone wants to order the Wolf's Dragoon's Assault Star, there, that's the link. Um, I also want to say, uh, nobody judge me. I am a recovering uh, Plastic Crackaholic. I played Hero Clicks for a long time out of blind packs and tournament scene competitively and et cetera, et cetera. I have a problem and you never recover from that kind of thing. So don't judge me. reason i don't buy like uh i i have lost what they're called in like modern uh pc games and such where it's blind boxes but gotcha games sure why not someone in chat or, come up with it. or are we just talking loot boxes loot boxes is what i was looking for boom Surprise how it reads it 50 shades dude I don't think you want to put me through that, Sparrow. Do you, like, do you hate me that much? Like, you, I, I, I got a lot of books don't, in this house. I don't have any of those. Listen, don't ask that question. I mean, that's fair. We are the Black Pants Legion. We do crazy shit all the time. I prefer not to do that. And Phantom, I understand where you're coming from with board games that come with minis. I worked really fucking hard when I decided to get back into mini painting three years. Okay, yes, I'll read Dune. I'm okay with reading Dune. I'll read Hyperion on stream. Motherfucker, I will read 15 books of the Wheel of Time on stream as Boomhauer. It'll be very tiring. Just don't say that you'll do them all at the same time and you'll be I'm, fine. I miss Gilbert. I miss several comedians we've lost this year. I miss comedians we haven't lost this year. Yeah, well, that's fair. But, like, Norm MacDonald and Gilbert Gottfried both hurt me on, like, a, a personal level. Not because, like, oh, yeah, Gilbert Gottfried or whatever, but because, like, I, I love watching comedians talk about comedy. I love watching them talk about... This is the kind of shit we do behind the scenes. I love people talking about their craft, whatever it is. And, like, with comedians, it's like, oh, yeah, comedians, when they're on stage, they don't tell jokes on stage. They tell stories. Mm -hmm. But when you're talking about, like, off stage, that's when they tell each other jokes. That's where shit like the aristocrats comes from. And it's this mm -hmm. horrible joke. And the whole thing is who can make the worst fucking thing out of this setup? And... Like, we lost Gilbert Gottfried, who famously did it right after 9-11 at, I think it was the roast maybe of William Shatner, or it was a New York Friars Club roast. He did it live at a recording. Like, this is not a general public thing and whatever. But he did it, and he just kind of let that genie out of the bottle. It was great. It was great. And 
like Gilbert Godfrey was one of those people that the the general public like is aware of him, but not really as a comedian. And inside the comedy community, he was a titan because he could make any comedian laugh, like Norm Macdonald. I also miss Norm. I love listening to that shit, and those were two of the people that were unequivocally the best at it. Robin Williams. Rob, I mean, Robin was amazing. Robin was amazing on a whole different level. Robin mm-hmm. was an entirely different critter. Three sets from the amazing guys at Guillotine Games. I'm not familiar with Guillotine Games, Phantom. Tell me about Guillotine Games. Please. This is an invitation. You have the metaphorical floor. I still have the floor. I have the microphone. Warlax has a microphone. So, like, it's a metaphorical microphone. The metaphorical floor, if you yes. will. Yes. Get on your soapbox. Tell us more. Get get on your theoretical soapbox. And tell us a great deal more about this guillotine games. Yes. The, the games of the guillotine, if you will. I don't know what the fuck we're doing right now. Man. Uh, Cookie, which, which one was it, Cookie? I don't even know who I am anymore. Yes, I saw Boomhauer Speed Paint earlier, if that's the one you're talking about. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, Cookie, you have models on my mini factory. I'm going to have to, like... Oh shit, Cookie, this is you? Cookie! Oh, these are what you were talking about earlier. Okay, I know that you had, uh, I, I caught in the 3D printing chat that you were saying that you were playing around with some of the sculpting stuff. The moment you decide to get more into that when you're comfortable with it, I'm on board. You got me? Do your, do your shit, Cookie, and I'm here for it. Everybody, if Cookie ever sets up a My Mini Factory uh, store, we're all obligated to buy shit from her, whether or not you have a 3D printer. We must all support Cookie Mama. Right, Warlax? Yep. Okay. That's called peer pressure. No, the, the answer <laughs> to that is, is yup, you're going to print them. <laughs> you're going to buy them, I'm going to print them, it's fine. It's fine. Fine. We're both going to buy them. Let's be honest. We're going to support Cookie. Mm-hmm. Guys, Cookie's kind of like the Muppets of the Legion. She represents the best of us. By the way, the Muppets are the best of humanity, and I'll hear no counter-argument. Amen. I still have that shirt from way back in the day when The Onion was still funny. That, uh, it just has, like... When it was funny instead of regular news? That's, yeah, unfortunately, that's not funny. But, uh, it was, like, two Muppet eyes on a field, and then below that, like, the only thing on the shirt was the two Muppet eyes, and then the words below that. Um, I appreciate the Muppets on a much deeper level than you. That was the whole shirt. I loved that shirt. What's my favorite Muppet movie? Well, that depends. Like, my favorite Muppet movie from, like, prior to 2011, it's hard to beat the first one. It really is. Although, although... A Muppet's Christmas Carol. Muppet, yeah, Muppet Christmas Carol is kind of... Christmas Carol and Treasure Island are both great. If I had to pick between the two of them, I'm going with Christmas Carol. Mm-hmm. I cook it. Girl figurines that don't look like they just have their tits out. That's that's really the amazing thing in this. Yeah. Yeah. 
I recommend nobody gets on cults and looks at the uh, the not safe for work category because like have a soul. Don't do that. Unless you're just looking for like the Dickosaurus stuff, then that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> the Dickosaurus Rex. Have you heard of the Dickosaurus Rex? I mean, otherwise, if you're on cults and you're looking at the not safe for work thing, it's typically anime girl, giant tits. And like, if that's your thing, fine, but like, Cool. Don't make it everyone else's problem. I don't, I don't need to know about it. Oh, and I've been bugged. Why am I bugged? Ah, oh, it's nothing. Nothing. It's a Facebook group about printing shit because that's what my life is. Oh, uh, let's see. Dwarves are kind of bronze generally, aren't they? We're not going to go with much in the way of uh, steel on dwarves. Really. I, I, I would take uh, dwarves as being um, kind of an autumn palette. Yeah. Bronzed, bronzed skin tone uh, tends to be like red or black for beards. Well, I'm, I'm remember I'm kind of aiming generally for something uh, uh, visually similar to, but legally adjacent to Gimli. Mm -hmm. So um, lots of browns in this because. You know, Peter Jackson decided dwarves are brown, I guess. And, you know, natural sprinters! And who are we to argue with him? You know, Peter Jackson and Tolkien. Like, I'm not going to fight him. Nah. If either of them walked into a bar today, uh, my answer is uh, I buy them a drink, not Dude, I get angry at them. If James or Christopher Tolkien walked into a bar today, I'd shit my pants and run out. Oh, I know. I am well aware. It was a weird day when Christopher Tolkien died, and I thought, oh, Christopher Tolkien isn't that... Oh, shit, yes, he was that old. Yes. Christopher Tolkien had been holding up his father's legacy since, like, the 50s. Mm-hmm. It's always fun to hear stories about Tolkien because, you know, Tolkien was an English professor. Tolkien taught Old English. Like, if you've ever read the books, which who hasn't at this point, aside from me, because I never, like, they never did anything for me. Yeah, I'm admitting that on the stream, whatever. His writing style didn't work for me. They're great movies. The books aren't for me. If you like them, great. Now, that said, his Rohirrim speak Old English. Not like they speak something inspired by Old English. They speak Old English. Yes, they do. And he used to argue with... Uh... Shit, I'm losing names here. Ugh. I keep reaching for it, and I come up with Lewis Carroll, but I'm looking for Narnia. That... Uh, I thought that was Lewis Carroll. C.S. Lewis. Thank you. Thank you, Cookie. C.S. Lewis. Uh, no, Lewis Carroll wrote uh, uh, Alice in Wonderland. But uh, he used to argue with C.S. Lewis about it and be like, no, no, clearly they're not the same thing. Like, they're, they're not at all Old English. I'm like, dude. Yes, they are. Anyway, like, whatever. Like, they're great books if they're for you. They're not for me. But Tolkien was an English professor. He would start his old English class, or his English literature class. On the first day of class, he would kick in the doors into the, the lecture room. And he would recite, like, the first several pages of Beowulf in Old English, at the top mm -hmm. of his lungs. So he'd kick in the doors, Hoeta! and just, like, launch into it. Mm-hmm. And it's brilliant to see it, but it's also brilliant to see the result of it, because my wife is an English professor, so I'm aware of the fact that if you walk into class on the first day and you do that, what you do is you cause half of your class to drop on day two. 
So you have less work. Brilliant. You don't okay. have to grade as much. You don't have to deal with as many questions. It's fucking brilliant. It's the most intimidating thing you can do. And he had that shit figured out in the 20s. <laughs> That's great. Why do you do this? I just don't want to deal with him. <laughs> what do you do with this? Well, I mean, wouldn't you? It's fair. I just want to sit here and write my books, you know, and write my stories that are really just excuses to make up languages. Well, James, are you still doing that? Yes. Yes, I am. Well, that's quite an interesting hobby you have here. Yeah? Yes, people will read it for years to come. Do you really think so? Yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> I do believe so, sir. Yes. <laughs> if I do say so myself. Yes, I do. Yeah, very, very good there. Well, we're going to sit here in our in our English pub, which, as as uh, Cookie was mentioning earlier, the writing group, which I don't believe they necessarily called it a writing group at the time in the 30s and 40s, but the writing group that Tolkien and C.S. Lewis belonged to was called the Inklings, and there was a whole group of them, but those are the two that you would know offhand, and like they would meet in a pub and just do this shit and just talk about what they were working on that a modern writing group would have philosophical discussions and like that sounds amazing to sit in on and you know i'd, I'd love to i love like i said i love listening to people talk about their crap on the other hand like it also sounds like an amazing uh opportunity to just like let all of your pretension go as wild as you can Oh, yes, because it would have been uh, dealt with with a considerable amount of opium. Yes. Well, uh, okay, it's a bit late for that. Yes. <laughs> when do you think this is? The teens, when we're just putting cocaine into whatever drinks we can come up with? I guess that's earlier, but it doesn't matter. It's funny. It's fun. Guys, we like funny shit. Funny shit's good. Like Gilbert Godfrey talking about... Not like Gilbert Godfrey talking about an entire incestuous family just fucking the shit out of each other. And it's called The Aristocrats! And we've come full circle. That's a callback right there. That's Welcome welcome to the BPL. Welcome to the BPL, folks, where apparently we occasionally talk about just fucking... The dog's usually involved with the story. There's something on it. You've never heard... Someone recite the aristocrat. There's an entire documentary about it. And like, go into it expecting the worst shit you've ever heard. Not like, this isn't funny. Like, the most obviously offensive shit you've ever encountered. Expect that. Know that that's the point, And you might have fun. Maybe. Oh, dear. <laughs> It sounds like something that most people would find offensive. And that's rather the point. I know. Okay, here's what we're going to do, real quick. If you How find the aristocrat's joke offensive, it was made for you. Okay. So how long have I been painting Gimli? Or dimly, as it were. Uh, about 30 minutes. He's done. This is how he looks. This was no effort. This is this is actually kind of infuriating. This was super easy. I've done a little bit of highlighting onto the chainmail. I could probably do a little bit of highlighting onto the armor bits. But he's basically done. And he looks pretty fucking great. Like, he could probably use a little bit of highlighting on his cape. But this is this is kind of maddening. This is... Speed paints are, in fact, witchcraft. You heard it here first, folks. These Danes that have invented this stuff are in league with the devil. I think. Maybe. I'm not sure. 
I don't really care. It very possibly could be maybe. Wait, 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 Cookie, did you just burn the shit out of me? Cookie, I'm not usually that drunk in chat. Occasionally, I am. It does happen. I'm not going to deny that. I'm going to be honest with you. Holy shit, is that camo specs? Bomber, is that you? We got to hold up. Is that B1B Bomber? Is that hotel hobbyist chatting as camo specs online? Holy fuck, dude. I've been following you for years. Jesus H. Okay, well, now I'm just starstruck. Wow. Dude. <laughs> Jeez. Like, I, I occasionally comment on your shit on Instagram. Like... By the way, um, Flyer, you're, uh, I still haven't built up the courage to do your, uh, Tira Moraborg. Like, like, you're, uh, you're Shalone Fighter. Like, I've still got it. It's still gray. Like, I'm intimidated. Yes, absolutely post your, post your YouTube, post your Instagram. Do that shit, Camo. Do that shit, uh, Flyer. Whatever you want to go by. Like, do that shit. Like, guys, uh, B1B Flyer here, also known as Hotel Hobbyist on Instagram, who has posted more than anybody else lately on the YouTube channel Camo Specs Online, does shit for Catalyst as painting instructions, if I have been led to understand that correctly. Flyer is legit. Go to his Instagram. And follow Flyer. Like this isn't this isn't like like do that shit. <laughs> That's amazing. I didn't think that shit was gonna happen. No, it <sighs> doesn't sound like it. <laughs> anyway, anyway, anyway. Like Jesus, did I like. <sighs> But a flyer, like, dude, I I did your, uh, I followed your your steps on making the uh, the uh, the the Black Widow Company stuff like last year. It it was fucking amazing, man. Okay, honestly, I'm I'm gonna go through this. I'm gonna say it real quick. Like, I I am uh, my train has been derailed entirely. We got nine minutes left here. The Witch King here is not gonna get done. I'll probably make some progress on. Him. Okay. Camo Specs Online is a website and a YouTube channel about painting Battletech shit officially from Catalyst. So, like, flyer here. No, dude, don't. Anyway, no, you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. I've already done two models. Uh, flyer does tutorials on how to paint this shit. I strongly encourage you to go to Camo Specs Online on YouTube and follow their advice because it's amazing. Okay, I got like eight minutes left here. Let's see what we can do with the Witch King of Angmar. Let's do some crazy shit. The Witch King of uh, Legally Distinct from Angmar. What do we got? What do we got? Uh, green, the, the, green. Witch, the Witch King of um, somewhat close <laughs> but not directly uh, connected to Angmar. It's the Witch King of Bangmar. Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah. Ha <laughs> ha! Dangly parts. I'm not even gonna lie, that is my text ringtone because. Hey, Mad Ducks, if you're looking for a, uh, if you're looking for a monochromatic paint scheme, uh, the Merrick, uh, Knights of the Inner Sphere, or uh, the Calm Guard are what you're looking for. Of course, if Flyer has something to say about that, I will immediately bow to Flyer's advice. We're going to make the Witch King blue. This is going to be a regal Witch King, guys. Maybe. Let's see what happens. Blue and purple. Blue and purple. He's going to be fabulous. 
No, use the purple as like the highlights. Oh, oh, I see. I don't have that kind of time here, man. I got seven minutes. I know. What I'm saying is when you have the time during the week. Oh, sure, sure. I'll go through. You, you, and... tend, to go, you tend to go back through and then show us at the uh, beginning the... of the next stream. Yep. Now, I am reminded, I'm going to be here next week. The following week, I'm on vacation. So I don't think you guys are going to see me the following week unless I am, like, painting in rural Kentucky on a camera setup I don't have there, which would be <laughs> weird. So let's assume that's not happening. Next week, I'm here. I am here next week. I wonder if Flyers ever had that response to them dropping into a channel before, because, like... I am fucking flabbergasted. I don't I don't get flustered very easily. I am fucking flustered. <laughs> He's not lying, guys. It's uh like I uh, I am when you're in when you're in voice chat with this man, uh that there is no flustering him. I am uh, this, deeply this, jaded. Th this is the uh the one time I believe I have ever seen him uh, not have something to say. I got nothing pithy here. Like, I am just... Wow! Like, the way that the other streamers on this channel get about... Hey, one of the game devs is in here. Like, Flyer Paint shit officially. Uh, yeah, I'm... Wow. Do my boom hair, man. I'm gonna tell you what that man means that a flyer came in here, man. He was just in there, like, hey, man, use that speed paint there pretty good, man. I was just like, yeah, I'll tell you what's a holy shit, man. You that, you that guy what has that uh, YouTube channel? And I was like, yeah, I am. And I'm just like, that's pretty cool, man. He's like, yeah, I know. And I was like, you got that Instagram too? And he was like, hey, man, I got that Instagram all day long every day, man. And just like, oh, yeah, I'm gonna tell you what, I get all kinds of them uh, upvotes and likes and stuff, and it's real good stuff. And I'm just like, hell yeah, man. He's just like, hell yeah. All right, I am finished with my stuff for hey, the night. Because hey. I've got to get the photos over to you. Okay. Uh, by the way, uh, nobody has said hail hydrate here, but I've got I've got flyer in here, so hail hydrate, slancha. Hail hydrate. By the way, by the way, let me let me get one thing out of the way here and do that embarrassingly sincere thing I sometimes do. Flyer, you're responsible, at least partially, for me being as deep into this at this point as I am. Because I have followed your advice. And you have had good advice, and thank you. Warlax, go watch his videos. I don't care what you're doing tomorrow, you're watching his videos. Okay. Guys, that's also called peer pressure. Okay. Listen, I, I'm easily pressured. Okay, so that's cloudburst blue. I don't know if that's coming through. Some highlights there. It's okay. I'd like to have more. So I'm probably going to keep working at that. If we're going to do the highlights in blue... The, <sighs> flyer like that's that's why you're doing it i'd like to think that you get that kind of response more often but jeez dude like okay let me let me put it like this real quick real quick let me just say it in order to get better at painting this shit this is for everybody you got to do two things you got to know where to go and you got to practice so sometimes that means learning about technique from assholes like me that kind of know what they're doing, people like Flyer that definitely know what they're doing, and then just sitting down and trying to fucking do it. Because you're never going to be that good on your first go-round. But if you keep working at it, you're going to get there you're going to get more confident in your brush technique. You're going to get better at recognizing techniques that you see in something that's done. You got to practice this shit. You got to know what techniques are there. And sometimes that means research. And sometimes that means watching people or listening to people or reading articles or whatever. 
Flyer's a great resource, and there are tons of other ones on YouTube. Like, I like Goobertown. I like, uh, who do I, I always talk about? Ninjon on here. There are a lot of people on YouTube to follow and do this. Scott the Miniature Maniac is pretty good, but I can't put up with him making sounds with his mouth, which he does specifically for that purpose. But, like, you gotta do this shit. If you want to get better at it, all you can do is practice, which is why I own a 3D printer. Because it makes it a lot cheaper to do this. And also sometimes so you can come through and say, hey, I don't like that Shadow Cat that comes out of Mech Warrior Online, so I'm going to design my own Shadow Cat with blackjack and hookers and with a bigger fucking cannon that doesn't look like it shoots a 22 long rifle on mech scale. This model is too big, by the way. It's too big. Like, next to an executioner. It's too big. But, I wanted to make sure it worked. I replaced this with uh, Thunderhead's uh, Auto Cannon 5 from the Dugram. And I also didn't like the way that the arm was on it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't fucking matter. Yes, Cookie, he's a, he's a remarkably large boy what stomps. Anyway... Did you send me the thing yet uh, for w your progress? I've sent you, I've sent you a couple. Uh, okay. My phone camera is just a pain in my butt. Well, have I got a phone to sell you? I'm not going to sell you a phone right now. You don't have to worry about it. I'll sell you a phone later. Let me tell you no, about the fine phone. As a, as a photographer, I've got a nice camera. I just uh, don't <laughs> have it with where I am right now. As a nice fucking heathen, I have a nice camera phone. Okay, yes, the AC-2 is the 22 long rifle of auto cannons. But, but, the way that the AC-5 is made on the MechWarrior Online model, the barrel of it is fucking silly small. So, like, if you can find the Matt Mason Syllogy model or someone else that has pulled the model for it, it's just embarrassingly small. Like, it's erectile dysfunction, kind of limp dick, kind of... That's not really a mech-scale weapon kind of embarrassment. Anyway. Anyway. Let's see what Warlocks has sent us. I'm going to go through and fix this shit later this week, and you all get to see it on my Instagram and next week, and, you know, this and that, and whatnot, and... Jesus. This has ended up being a good night. I got, like, seven or eight clips out of this from various people, and <laughs> where, you know, me boom-hiring and whatever. You, you do not. Uh, hey man, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna do that boom hire right there, man. I'm gonna tell you what you can get on there and go www. Click, 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 and go on to that Instagram, man. See what kind of boom hire shit they got. Okay, I'm gonna pick one picture out of this uh, Warlax. Uh, I feel like this oh, is the means. this is the best angle. Now I'm gonna ask you a question because I did one Yo. of these the other night in speed paint. Do you want to see what it looks like? Sure. Okay. That's I'll, not done yet. But, that's uh, fine. That's is... fine. That... How do you like the leather on the jacket? It looks good. I don't think it's supposed to be leather in the game, but that's also not really a problem. Like, make it however you want to. I think it's canvas in the game, but I, I definitely used a leather color on mine. Oh. Well, I used a base khaki brown, and then two of the scale 75 um, uh, wood colors in order to get it to that darker hue. Oh my god, it's so big. Why so big, OBS? It's the biggest NCR veteran ranger that's ever rangered. Let's transform that and turn it side. You know, I, I feel like most other people that stream on this channel don't have this problem where they have to, like, flip. There. There we go. Don't worry, he's just got the big iron on his hip. Big iron. Big iron. It's great so yeah so the pants still need some detailing uh i've got to figure out what i want to actually do with the chest armor that's right folks we got to figure out the better britches on this now but uh here's here's what i've got on this this is oh i don't want to remove the camera what are you satan 
Okay. And I also did send you the finished uh oh, I miss salamander. I, I don't know how to I don't know how to do nothing. I don't know you people. I don't know where my grandchildren are. I don't know what's going on. Where are we? Who are you? Why am I here? Anyway. Uh Sela Mander. That's right. Scaramanga the character from The Man with the Golden Gun, played by Christopher Lee. That no, no, I think you did something wrong there, OBS. That was not the thing I wanted you to resize. <laughs> that's right, guys. That's right. Everyone watching, OBS is a wonderful program that is free of charge and sometimes does dumb shit. Flip 90 and degrees. The there background... we go. In the background, you can definitely see um, uh, the remnants of what happened to my crimson. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a great... <laughs> Thousands of years ago, a foolish samurai warrior spilled the paint. That's right. You're Samurai Jack now, but you paint. Is that okay? He yes. tried to paint the glory that is Aku. Now I have to find an Aku model. Damn it, what am I fucking doing? I guess I'm finding Aku. <laughs> Dear my mini factory, I need Aku. Uh, Kazuntite. Thank Shut you. up. <laughs> That's right, folks. Mako, the man of one voice, and he'll fight you over it. The age oh, of high adventure. But uh, that was done mostly with uh, that. With them, their uh, speed orc paints. Skin, orc skin speed paint. Aku could be a Catan shard of uh, <laughs> of melodramatic voices, like. Oh, the foolish samurai has come to challenge the great sorcerer and shapeshifter, Aku. Uh, I'm going to go hide in the deceiver shadow. Anyway, guys, it has been a lovely night. I am thrilled to have had you all here. We will be back next week. We will not be here the following week. But... We're going to do this thing. We are fired. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you come by next week. It has been the highlight of my week to have you here. I never thought I was going to be, oh, yeah, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to paint you. By the way, this is how people type. I don't know why I'm typing, despite the fact I paint on this, but let's not pay any attention to that. So I'm going to do this painting stream, and maybe B1B Flyer is going to come by and, you know, be like, hey, cool shit and i'm gonna be like thanks that 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 was never like a thing so like i'm thrilled that shit has happened i encourage everyone here to go check that shit out i hope everybody has a good night and for the sake uh, that is flyer that's how you type it wow well at least you don't type like scotty in star trek 4 where you do this shit this is funny to me i don't know uh, Mad Crow, if you, if you missed it, you are welcome to go back and check it on the YouTube VOD. But, anyway. God, I have made some Star Trek references here tonight. I guess I guess I made a Star Trek 6 reference during uh, Rob's stream earlier. What was it I said? I said, in space, all warriors are cold warriors. That doesn't matter. Regardless, Warlocks. You had said to me you wanted my friend Alex's contact information. Alex, by the way, Alex Riss. Alex made my avatar. I'm pointing at it on my screen. You all can see that, I'm sure. Not just like the shadow of my hand making circles around my avatar on my own screen. Alex made my avatar. I am going to be commissioning Alex at some point for some end card art. I strongly encourage everyone to follow. Yes, Alex also did the emote. Thank you, Cookie. Paint the mini, Shinji. Uh, I strongly encourage everyone to, uh, if, if you're interested, like, check Alex out. Uh, they do some great art. They do some great shit. 
Anyway, y'all have a good night. Thank you for coming. I appreciate everyone's time and attention. We will be back next week. Y'all are fucking amazing. Let's throw it to the end card.